Hello and welcome to .NET Nuke Module Development. I'm your instructor, Scott Wilkinson. This is part one of a multi-part series on developing custom extensions or private assembly modules in .NET Nuke. This segment will discuss the prerequisites or the tools that you'll need to develop your module, and then we'll cover the DNN6 core installation. These are the prerequisites you'll need when developing a module in .NET Nuke. You'll need a copy of Visual Studio, in my case, 2010 Professional Edition. You'll need some kind of web server, either IIS or Web Matrix. If you're not familiar with Web Matrix, it's a free development platform that Microsoft offers. It includes code editors for HTML, SQL, or JavaScript, but it also includes a web server. In this case, I'm using it because it's the easiest way I've found to get .NET Nuke running with minimal configuration. You'll also need .NET 3.5 or, or higher. Usually this comes via Windows updates. You'll need SQL Server 2005 or 2008. In my case, I'm using 2008. And then we'll need the DNN6 Community Edition install package. One frequently asked question is whether or not you'll need the source package when developing a module for .NET Nuke. And the answer is no. You only need the install package. The source package is only if you're going to make changes to the DNN core. So let's get started installing .NET Nuke. To do this, we'll go to .NET Nuke.com and click on the download link at the top of the page. Then we'll select the Community Edition. We'll then be presented with two options, the user install and the web matrix install. Both are similar in that they'll use the web platform installer to download and save the ASP.NET project, which is the .NET Nuke framework, to your hard drive. The user install you would use if you're configuring it in IIS because you're going to download and install it on your hard drive and configure IIS manually for the website. The web matrix installation is a little bit more automated in that it downloads and installs the code on your hard drive but also sets up the website in web matrix. So let's click that one. You'll be taken to Microsoft's website where you'll be asked to run the web platform installer. Now your experience might be different than mine in that I've already installed Web Matrix on my system. If you have not yet installed it, it will ask you to install that first and take you through that installation wizard. Once you're done with that, you'll you'll see this page right here, which is the installation of .NET New Community Edition. We'll install and accept the license agreement for .NET Nuke. It will download and install the code. Once completed, you'll be taken to a congratulations page right here. When you click finish, it will automatically start up Web Matrix for you. Notice that here's the path in which it downloaded and installed the ASP.NET project, and here's a port that was automatically created for me by the Web Matrix web server. If I click that, it'll open the website, and now I have a working installation of .NET Nuke. Now let's configure our .NET Nuke installation. This isn't going to be a comprehensive review on .NET Nuke configuration. I'm just going to show you the easiest way to get your .NET Nuke website up and running so we can start module development. So now that we're on the first page of the installation wizard, we'll select our language, our installation method is typical, and click Next. Next page is a file permissions check. I haven't had an issue when installing with Web Matrix with this permissions check. I've had issues in the past when installing it in IIS. Usually it's a simple file permissions. Just refer to the .NET Nuke website for information on how to fix those issues. So now we'll click Next. We have to configure our database connection. But before we do this, I'm going to be using a SQL 2005-2008 database. I need to first set the database up before I can uh, configure it in .NET Nuke. So let's go over to our SQL Server Management Studio and I'll go ahead and create the database. I'm going to call it DNN6. Now that the database is created, 
I'll find an existing login. Uh, in this case, I've created a, a, a login called DNN user, and I'll set him up as the owner of this database. So I'll click on the user mapping and check the DNN6 database I just created and check him on as the DB owner and click OK. So now that I have my database and my user, I can go back to the installation wizard and set that up. Since this database is running on my local machine, I'm going to set the server as just dot. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but I'm just putting a dot in there. The database is DNN6, and I'm going to uncheck integrated security because I'm going to use my SQL Server login, which was DNN user, and I'm going to enter the password, leave run as DB owner checked, and click next. If it finds the database, it'll start installing the database scripts. Once it's done, it'll say installation of database complete, and we'll click next. Next, we'll have to configure our super user account. And in this case, I'm just going to assign the host username some kind of password. And I'll name my website. And I'll click Next. What should happen now is we should have a fully configured .NET Nuke website. And here it is. This is .NET Nuke right out of the box, fully configured. Now that we've installed and configured our .NET Nuke website, the next video we're going to learn about the module development template and we're going to create the module project.